Last time, we discussed expressing God's love to those who are unlovely. Specifically speaking, we talked about one who had cheated me out of a good deal of money. The time was spent discussing how praying for this individual and asking God to bless them was an expression of God's love. But here's the question. How can I honestly ask God to bless somebody who has just cheated me, who has wronged me so greatly? It makes no kind of sense. It's not fair. It's not just. How, then, can this prayer ever be sincere? Well, that's what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a Simple Not Shallow video, a video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it, and yet not so shallow that when the storms of life hit, our faith is forced to run aground. See, we want, we want our faith to be like a very good cup of coffee. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. Oh yeah. Mm. Hot and satisfying. <laughs> so here we go. So the question is, how is this done? Well, the simple answer is forgiveness. So how can we forgive? Well, I think one of the ways that we can do this is by remembering just how much we have been forgiven for. See, there's this beautiful story in the book of Matthew that tells us how important our forgiveness of others is to God. In this story, a great king forgave one of his servants, but that servant did not forgive other servants. See, he was expected if he would do so that he would forgive others, but he didn't, and there was a terrible price to pay. See, by forgiving others, by showing mercy to others, we are actually truly embracing and honoring God's love and His mercy. Now, this is not easy, for it requires you to leave the shallows and journey forth onto the depths of God's love. In other words, spiritually speaking, it requires that you become a grown-up, to realize that God's love and His mercy are not limited in their application to only you. They do require you to apply them to other people. Now, I have heard it objected, you know, I cannot forget what they have done, so I cannot forgive that person. And I, I think this thought comes from a very unfortunate yet very popular phrase, you know, to forgive and forget. Meaning that in order for our forgiveness to be authentic, we must forget the wrong that has been done to us. I also think that this does have some basis in the Bible, in the misinterpretation of the Bible. In, uh, in particular, Psalms 103 and Jeremiah 31. See, in the Psalms passage, God says He removes our sin as far as the east is from the west. And in the Jeremiah passage, He states that He will not remember them any longer. And I also tend to think that this tends to be used for some very selfish purposes, either for escaping or for wanting to impose consequences on another person. See, to escape when used by the guilty party, to get out of any consequences, to impose those consequences when used by the one who has been hurt. But whatever the basis, there are problems with this type of forgetfulness. First, it is always God who says that He will remember sins no more. And while I have some doubts about you, I know for certain I'm not God. <laughs> Second, while God commands us many, 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 many times to forgive others, He never commands us to forget the wrongs done. And third, in terms of consequences, each of these positions is very selfish in nature. See, there is a profound lack of consideration for the other person in either trying to get out of consequences or in trying to impose them. And God's love is not found in selfish motivations. Also, I find it quite informative 
that when the Bible is looked at in its entirety, the main thought behind forgiveness is that our sins are not held against us, not that they are truly forgotten. For instance, Paul teaches in the book of Romans that sin is not accounted against us. It is not counted or held against us. The pardon has been granted. The guilt has been removed. And in this sense, they are forgotten. The meaning here is not a lack of memory. Rather, it concerns a lack of deserved condemnation. See, a wise friend once shared something very profound with me on this. He said, it is precisely because that we as human beings cannot forget that Jesus commands us so often to love and forgive. Yeah. See, forgetfulness is also absent in Paul's description of what love does, well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which says that love is patient, it is kind, it doesn't envy, doesn't brag, is not proud, it doesn't behave itself inappropriately, it doesn't seek its own way, it is not provoked, it takes no accounting of evil. Oh, it doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness, and it does rejoice in the truth. It bears all things, it believes all things, and it hopes all things, and it endures all things. See, love never fails. Okay, did you notice that causing wrongs to be forgotten didn't make the list? It's not there. It does say, you know, that it does not take account of evils, which sounds a whole lot like that Romans passage we discussed just a second ago, doesn't it? Love makes them of no account. Oh, they took place, but the deserved guilt is gone. And this is not the same thing as truly being forgotten, is it? This is a very important difference of words. So, to forgive does not mean to pretend that a wrong did not occur, nor does it mean to truly forget that the wrong occurred. What it means is that we are not to hold wrongs done against us against those who have done them. We are to let them go. Even as God has forgiven us, so we must forgive others. And we are to pray for those who persecute us. Now here is a very, very important note. This also does not mean that there are no consequences for the wrongs done. See, there is a difference between not holding a wrong against somebody, that is, not bearing a grudge, and being wise enough to know that, even with this being so, the consequences for their actions must be enforced. You know, even if that means no longer relating to that person. This takes wisdom, which we are encouraged to go and ask God for. So, this is done by prayerfully focusing on loving, forgiving, and extending God's mercy. So we need to ask for wisdom and leave the consequences in God's hands. So ask Him to help you forgive. And then, once you have forgiven, ask God for the wisdom to know how to relate or not relate to those who have wronged you. Do not selfishly do this. Do not decide on your own. Ask God for wisdom and direction. Ask for His wisdom and you will receive it. Seek His guidance and you will find it. Ask Him to give you the wisdom to know how to love simply, wisely, and well. Well, what do you think? Please tell me in the comments section below. Also, in the description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I referenced in the order that I referenced them in this video. That way, you can go check me out. Make sure I'm not completely making any of this up, making any of this completely up, rather, or that I'm way out in left field. Also, if you liked this video, please click that like and the subscribe buttons, and then tag that gray notification bell that pops up and tell YouTube you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. And we now have a podcast version of this video available. If you'd like to download this podcast version, simply go to simplenotshallow.com 
or you can go to the podcast service of your choice and subscribe to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. You know, be it at Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, whichever you prefer. That way, you can listen whenever, however, wherever you'd like, while you're driving in your car, while you're walking your dog, while you're taking a morning jog, <laughs> whatever you'd like. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Ooh. And I'll catch you next time.